Um, sorry, I was just reading an email from a client. Hey, right. hey we're recording. Be careful. Don't show your internal company information. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not going to show you that. But, uh, <laughs> I've been told that their standard configuration on all their company-issued laptops is a 1080p resolution with 150% scaling enabled. <laughs> and and I'm like... <laughs> No wonder your portal doesn't fit. Like your <laughs> fonts must be like size nine hundred and seven on the screen. You know? uh, uh, by the way, <laughs> just just so you know the 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 um, you, I think I think that you also have to pass accessibility on your portal. I'll right. explain. I'll explain that to you when you start actually writing a proper proper uh board or portal. yeah so we use things like the the aria attributes that specify yeah. you know when yep. screen readers should read stuff out and things like yep. that yep. yeah yeah that's exactly yeah mm -hmm. um, you, you should also do you know that microsoft has like a browser extension that can kind of give you the give you the you know the you know the situation like it'll tell you exactly you know how how your website is doing in terms of accessibility and all that it's very important that's yeah. cool i tend to use a lot of the built-in browser tools they are underlying like chromium stuff that's in chrome and in edge these days it's pretty <laughs> powerful isn't it yeah yeah it's surprising how much you get for it Okay, dude, uh, we need to do the brand. We just need to do a broker for that SQL thing that you created. Uh, so let's do it together. Okay. Why don't you, uh, let's see here. So I'm going to create a new branch users. Um, yeah, I, I think what I committed last time was literally just, I had a unit test file and in that I just threw all of the code and I thought yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's probably perfect. this time round we would end up writing services and brokers and things just to. Yep. Let's, let's just out. see. Yep. Yep. Let's just see here. So this is Odata Neo. I, I see a PR. Basic idea was to solve the problem, wasn't it? So now that we've essentially solved it, I guess it's you know, put it right. <laughs> yeah, solve, that... it, solve it correctly. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Let's put this in draft so nobody just hits the button on it by mistake. Where do you draft things? Oh my lord. Let's see. Squash, rebase. Nope, none of that. I know they lift it like a little tiny thing in a. No assigned to no one. Where is it to draft? Code. Nope. It's like a really tiny. Yeah, it's convert to draft. Look at this. The least, the least oh. convenient. Just a tiny, a tiny little message that sits in the bottom here. Okay, so this is that. Let's see here. So let's open this in VS Code online. Don't forget when we're done with this, you might want to remove the EF reference from our unit test project. That's right. Um, just because obviously you don't want that dependency on the tests, do you really? Right. Uh, let's see. Expression, expressions broker. Oh, that's just you fixing things. Why didn't you push this individually, bro, in a different PR? Can you do it in a different PR, like this fix in here? Because that's a uh... fix, right? And also, why do you have link here? You have link here because because of no reason. So, so this one here, this can go to our production code, right? Um, yeah, I, I think I previously pushed a fix directly into the main branch in error. Okay. okay. And then I realized that the fix still had an issue. So I thought, okay, what I'll do is in lieu of losing the fact that i'd seen that there was still an issue i'll fix it in this and then maybe as part of today's session we'll get it all worked out essentially okay. like what i didn't want to do was keep playing with it in lieu of my epic github skills um which seems <laughs> to fail me almost daily at the moment yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd think like 20 years into a career i would have figured out how to commit code right but no, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> but believe it or not, the the dude that actually taught me get 
get uh, commands and all that was um, he, he's a very smart dude though. Uh, his name is Dale Weiler. He's from Canada, and uh, he was obsessed obsessed with programming, software engineering, all that. He was obsessed with it. Wait, this is fixed script logic. Uh, let's see. You have script logic in here. You have the link. What did you change then? Hold on a second. Was it? If I revert this. Hey, Etienne, how are you? Good, you guys. Hey, brother. Hey, I think I just popped in. Did you guys in my kill... previous mess? <laughs> did you guys kill each other yesterday? Talk yes. about gaming. Okay. Nice. Now we 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 got into some really deep architectural stuff yeah. i really want to play with this and i think you do as well this dot stuff in unity because i think yeah. that lends that's what i was telling him <laughs> that's what i was yeah. telling him they, they broke we'll unity win. into entities and systems right yeah that's yeah. what i was saying anyway okay <laughs> all right let's do this so i'm gonna create a new branch here my friend and this new branch will be users hassan habib and um, and the brokers query broker. So this here is a a thing that's gonna give us a SQL query uh, out of out of that. So I'm just gonna go here. Here's a new folder queries queries. Yep. And then here's a query broker. I think I, I had I had two unit tests in. I had one that produced a SQL query, and then one that would, from the SQL query, make certain assumptions and build out a no token hierarchy. Yep. And then my thinking was, I I think we've already got stuff that can go from O tokens to O data strings. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, to be honest, I didn't look it up though. Um, but presumably that will be the, like the O tokenization service or something. Yep. So basically, we're going to get it from a, a a query service. The query service is the one that's going to be sitting on top of this broker, right? Yeah. And this query service is basically going to give us. So what do I want, really? I want a, you know, a, a, a get, get SQL query. And I'm passing an expression to this thing. Right, so I'm basically going and saying, "I'll give you an expression. Give me back the, the SQL query out of this." So this that is probably uh, wants to be generic as well, doesn't it? So why? you can say get get query from a set of type T because you need a generic T. Oh, you need it. You need a T in there. Okay, sounds good. Um, I don't know if the so here was the thing I was going to ask you about actually. So when mm. we expose our OData APIs, mm. we have like you know. Um, slash api slash set name right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then from the set name you then do you know query That's string you. dollar yep. blah 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 yeah you know, for your own data query yep is the set name part of what we would consider the o data query because if it is i think that's something we should try to encompass um perhaps like list it on the root node or something all the way through the chain no no we don't care about the set name but we do care okay. about the type somewhat, somewhat like in right. the, the type itself is important for us. So the person who's sitting this on the controller or whatever exposure layer, because that's the point of OData Neo, like part of its objectives is to be able to work as a module that you can integrate with ASP.NET Core, GRPC, whatever you want to do it. It doesn't matter. So it's generic enough for that matter. Um, mm -hmm. If you go into your O expression service, we're basically going and saying, hey, give me that type. So that type we care about, the set itself, we really don't care because we're going to give you back the expression and some exposure layer in OData Neo may kind of want you to pass in the data source, right? Um, I think mm -hmm. from last week, mm -hmm. um, isn't the root expression node in that expression tree that will be handed in? It's a list of T, isn't it? So if we really do need it, I think we've already got it actually. Yeah, but it's a fake list. Like if you look at the, if you look at the expression broker in here. Well, I'm just thinking because we passed T was through, it? so I don't know if T was relevant somehow. Uh huh. Do you, you, you mean, mean this? Why data? is it? Go ahead. Go ahead, Etienne. Yeah. So sorry, man. Why is it called a, a O expression? Like with the O? Because it's O data it's... expression. 
or, so, or, or were really I mean, surprised. Oh, expression. Oh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's actually. You need an H as well. <laughs> it, it's a wrapper object that wraps yeah. up an O token and an expression and a couple of other bits and bobs. So yeah, it just it we we went through a period of saying oh everything, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> we kept saying, so we have O token, we have O expression, you know, this will be O query. There will be a bunch of things that are like that. We're intentionally calling it this way because the word expression is reserved. Like the framework itself is going to, not, not the language, but the framework. The framework will say, what do you mean? Um, It's ambiguous, you know? So we're like, okay, we need to put a little bit of, you know, of our own kind of uh, logic in it. Yeah. Okay, I SQL query, but but Paul, back to my question: Does your let's look at your stuff, man? Let's see what your let's see what you're up to today. So let's see. You guys can't hear the robot in the back, can you? Yeah, hey, you please. can. You uh, can. Uh, yeah. That sucks. Okay, so let's go back here. I'm gonna have to kind of you know just starve them of of battery and energy and ba and, and power until they just shut up <laughs> sounds like a great strategy okay so so, so let's see yes. <laughs> in our line of work it practically is a child sounds like, sounds like first world problems <laughs> <laughs> my, my robot is <laughs> complaining oh, oh that sounds Lord. currently the only person on the planet complaining he's got too much power <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everybody no, else is in an energy cheating. crisis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Mr. Paul, this I know we probably need this. Okay, so you built your own test context. Hmm. Ah, you built your own test context, and you basically went and said, mm -hmm. You could probably just make like, um, you know, a private class as a nested class inside the the broker or something and just instance one of those and then use it no this could be the broker itself oh what so you have a broker of type uh, yeah. t yeah um, and it inherits from db context yeah hmm. i'm just trying to think through like okay so you pass the t in here so you can initialize your db set okay but you're not really sharing that db set anywhere so we can still make it generic in a way um yeah let's see here let's see mr paul mr paul wardy and this is your model and you basically went and said give me this apply method which does some logic and you're basically i'm assuming this part here is just your o token thing so i'm not going to worry on the, from this one but uh, the one I want, uh, so, o expression service, get SQL. Yeah, this guy is the guy that I care about. So where's that get SQL guy? It's this guy here. Yeah, that's what we care about. This and the bunch of stuff that you have down there. And that's it. Okay, cool. Yeah, there isn't much to it. Nice. Oh, cool. Thank you for doing this, sir. This is great. So that means that this guy might be inheriting from DB context. And let's pull in the NuGet package. It's going to be an interesting kind of conference. See, if we weren't, if I weren't working at Microsoft, it would be a completely different conversation about whether I can actually embed their libraries and redistribute because that's a policy violation but this is but i'm not just working at microsoft i'm also a member of the dotnet foundation so you know it would be it would be like punching ourselves in the face right like why are you doing that so are they you... free to to redistribute so if i create a new get package that depends on ef and somebody pulls my new get package is that technically microsoft distributing that or is that me distributing it that's you redistributing something owned by microsoft you need to check the license for it and ensure that they allow that if it's mit you're in the clear right if it's mit you're in the clear if it's if it's gnu you're screwed 
Do you know why? Because anybody who's going to be using your library must open source the library too. <laughs> That's, uh, Richard, that. that's yeah. Richard Matthew Stolman right there. Be like, don't don't use stuff that's licensed under GNU and go close source it, hmm. right? It's free software, free as in free speech, not free beer, you know? <laughs> you, should, you should watch the video that I have uh, about the uh, the modern trends in the, in the tech industry. I talked a lot about, you know, how, how our industry kind of shaped up like how did we end up in here right why what is why are we using windows and linux and mac and all that and and how does that impact every single library like every single piece of software that you're touching today is because it has been influenced by either hold on it's because it's, it's been influenced so you have you have in here you have extreme far right that's steve jobs you have extreme far left that's that's uh, uh stolman right like job says no you can't touch my code you can't even use different hardware than the one i tell you to no freedom for you go screw yourself right stolman is on the other side is like no you have to open source and if you don't open source you violated the and then there are people sitting in the middle right like bill gates went and said okay you still it's still closed source but you can use whatever hardware you want and then later on around 2014 when satya joined microsoft he basically said well let's open source some of our products as well right uh, this dude in the middle here he's just sitting nonchalant here he's like listen man i don't care whether you do business out of this or not i don't care what you do with it i just like to write code so i'm just gonna keep writing code and then you guys can go fight all you want right this is what i like about linus linus is like except if you do something he doesn't like then everybody hears about it he's, he's like as long as you're not messing around with my code i don't care like go do whatever you want with it <laughs> right which is the reason why we have servers today and we have he doesn't know it or probably he does but an entire business like red hat exists today because of this guy right what a lot of people don't understand is that if Richard Stolman didn't build the GNU plus Linux, there would be no Linux. Because what this guy built is just the kernel. Like Linus just built a kernel. That's it. That's a kernel is useless without the rest of the components. Like what are you gonna do with it? Right? It's like giving you an engine and telling you go travel. People seem to confuse open source with free though, don't they? Yep. This is the thing, like just because you can read the source code of something doesn't mean you can't charge for it. Right. You know. Right. And then, you know, Stolman would go and say, no, you have the right to redistribute it, modify it, copy it. You know, there's he, he put like four levels of freedom and freedom the, yeah. zero is the freedom to use it. And the m maximum freedom is to modify it and to make it something else. Anyway, these trends in our industry, you'll see a lot of companies like kind of shifting and going back and forth between these two trends, right? Like you'll see Amazons and Teslas and Googles, and you'll see them kind of dancing back and forth between these two. But essentially, it's literally this. The one thing that not a lot of people expected to happen is when Elon Musk basically went and said, hey, I'm open sourcing uh, the Tesla software. I'm making it open source. And people were like, "That that's new because usually business doesn't doesn't do that, especially profitable business that's making billions of dollars." So he kind of sat there in the middle and he said, "I'm gonna make a whole lot of money, but I am also going to open source, you know, Tesla software." Like that's careful, that. careful with that one though, because I've heard some interesting things about like their superchargers. So if Tesla deems a car not worthy to be supercharged. And yeah. you run a separate supercharging network, separate to Tesla's. So you're uh -huh. not running Tesla superchargers, you're running your own. Uh -huh. And you allow that car to charge on your supercharger network. Tesla will take you to court. <laughs> will they? Is that true? Yeah, it, there was a big thing. I think it was like Rich Rebuilds or something did a thing on it. Um, and yeah. you know, he talks about how like he's got a shop and he, he fixes up broken uh, Teslas and stuff. And he's like, yeah, we've had clients having problems with this kind of issue because once tesla deems the car unsafe for some reason that's it it's written off and there's yeah. not really a lot you can do about yeah. it through threat yeah. of you know the the legal system so yeah tesla comes across very open and friendly to the consumer but to other businesses they're brutal yeah absolutely brutal
Yeah, I, I started to see a lot of like Other like here on the roads here. It's it, here in Seattle. You'll see a Tesla. Literally, if you throw a stone like this, you're gonna hit a car with it. That's a Tesla here in Seattle, which is the first, first kind of culture. No, no. You'll you'll get out of the way of the stone. So with the fire. Etienne, what happened to your to your? Yeah, uh, yeah I can hear you, but you sound like a robot. You start. Uh, drop <laughs> the joint. So drop I can hear a robot in the background. Do, do you hear him okay? Paul? Yeah, he's a bit destroyed. Yeah. yeah it, drop that. and come back. Drop and come okay. back. Feel the force. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see here. So you want your DB set. You did all of this. Okay, cool. And then uh, let's see. So we can make this a T type, right? Uh, or let's see, I want to still make this generic without. Um... I mean, we can make this uh, in and of itself generic, but that's gonna kind of propagate all the way up until you reach to to the top of the line which is not what we want um so yes yeah, so i was saying the get sql query if that call there was made generic and my thought was create a private internal class definition inside mm. the broker itself so the mm. broker isn't necessarily the broker isn't a DB context, but it can construct like this private thing that only it knows about. Yeah. It is a DB context. So right. if, you'd have, if you'd have kept my DB context class exactly how it was and just pasted it in here as a private class inside the class, then you could just instance one using the T that would be the generic T from get SQL query on line 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to. Oh, you made it so it would take all expression too, Paul. Nice. Yeah. It, I mean, you're keen to keep your interfaces consistent and. Yeah. Um... It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an all expression though, would it? It would be an expression, just an expression, right? I think yeah. The, the code here only needs and. Um, expression it doesn't need the full o expression but i figured that as that was what we had and we were kind of um the pattern that we had been following up to this point was to take something we already had and then just append more data to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so i thought well okay i'll pass the thing in that we've already got but on this occasion i'm not really appending more data to it i'm just passing back the string in my proof of concept but we we might have ended up i don't know adding another property or something that was like string query or something. Right. Um, but I didn't know kind of until we got onto this session, I didn't know how it was going to kind of turn out and architecturally how you wanted it to be designed. I just wanted to solve the technical problem and then we yeah, 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 I get the architectural it. one today. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, no, I'm with you. I'm just trying to see like, um, would this be like this? set no that won't work we're gonna have to do that library uh we're gonna have to do that um sh shoot um let's see here so i can't create the db set as a nested because it's not partial to this guy so that's number no, one no no i mean the whole context so to find a public um a, sorry not a public just a class you know uh, internal context or something and then you can just instance one of those that's kind of where i was going at does that make sense yeah i'm trying and not to do that let's see d and then you have let's take that class as is that you have because because what 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 is this where does this belong this is not a broker <laughs> right this is not a, a a service this is what is it right so this is why i'm trying to avoid that guy but 
Yeah, I was just thinking use it's a it's a private type, right? That is used within the context of the business logic, but it, it's never seen outside of that broker. That was my thinking. Whereas if you define it as a public class like this, if somebody ran reflection over the assembly, they'd be like, what the hell's that? <laughs> right, right. What what would happen if we do it in here? Like if we go and say this and then this is just some data source. And that would be this guy. Why is this guy complaining though? Um, hold on, let me try it this way first. Just delete this. Uh, DB contacts, I think, already have a data source property, don't they? So you probably forced the well, well, even when it was just people, it didn't work. Like, see, so it's complaining about something else. Let's oh. see, what is it? T must be reference of type in order to use T. The type T must be. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. As you said, you where T is a class. That's it, yeah. So let's move that upstairs. <laughs> what is this? this is Lucy this in the background. She finds something <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> obviously back on her tablet or watching TV or something. <laughs> she proper cracks up, I tell you. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Add argument object. Oh, very, very useful. Very useful. Uh, parameters, and then you have your. I thought these parameters are params, and you don't need to do. Oh, it is an array, isn't it? Well, that sucks. Okay, so this is good, 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 good. And then I can go here and say get SQL from expression. Right? So we can actually keep this native like that. Oh, yeah, native, uh, native, yes. And we can just go here and take this out like this. And that would be your... Uh, well, why do you need that anymore, right? Because you already defined... You don't need that guy anymore, right? You just need to go and say, because I defined my broker this way, I can just use that T because it's going to be the same T that's up here, right? Yeah, you don't even need the new. The new? Yeah, you don't need that because you can just say um, this online on 30. Yeah, you can just, yeah. Well, you don't that need this. Out. You could just say set T. <laughs> and not even the this. Yeah, it, it, even it telling me, no. you know, why I, do you need? Yep. So yeah. this is it as queryable. So that comes back as I queryable of T. You have to be explicit about your types, Paul. You know that. Um, so thing, thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Method. I wasn't clear what we were defining at the time. So I said, hey, yeah, this is the thing, right? Okay. Now, what thing? And then we ended up writing it. <laughs> unary expression, expression. expression yeah and then uh, i'm not very happy about that one though i don't know what what to do here uh but yeah that looks about it and if we why is this guy complaining we don't need that anymore actually it's useless and control ke that would be so i can just take all of this and just throw it in here throw that guy out and we are done that would be the broker that's it the only that's thing it. that i have here is that that means that your the service that's that's handling this is gonna have to have um is gonna have to have that type it transcends it goes all the way up right so it goes it goes to so your service has to have a generic type that's calling this guy because you have to inject it so if you're going to inject it you need to inject it with a type of some kind you know how are you gonna how are you gonna pass that type in there which and, is why i was suggesting the, the private db context because i know you could put the generic on the method call only so you wouldn't need it on the i know the broker I know you don't really like that, but it's uh 
But I think no, I think it's okay because your your customer that's going to be consuming this is going to have to tell us the type anyway. Somehow they have to tell us the type, right? So we can work with that type. Even in your O expression broker, you still need to tell me the type somehow. So if that type is part of your instantiation of the client or not, it doesn't matter because you I still need to know what you're up to. I still need to know what you're doing. Uh, why is this? Yeah, I mean, an OData endpoint or an OData query, you know, uh -huh. either, either or, is essentially typed anyway. That's your root that you're starting from, isn't it? You're saying, hey, given a set of type T, right? this is my query. Right. You, you've always got a query, which is why I was saying to you earlier that, you know, if you have like, you know, slash API slash some type name or some name that um, internally AskNet maps that to a type. And then you right. get uh, that type of controller effectively. And then that's how it knows that T, if you like. Okay. So yeah, there, there's always a there's always a T there, basically. Let's see if it works. Moment of truth. Do you think your thing works? <laughs> I don't think I know. We've got passing unit tests. Okay, that's because I followed the standard. Right. <laughs> okay, let's see. I, you know, it. <laughs> you, you actually TDD this? Okay. Uh, public. Well, I, I tested it. Uh -huh. Then you uh -huh. wrote it without testing. <laughs> Is, well, you, well, you don't test brokers, though. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Is Paul right? That's business logic. <laughs> Let's see. Um, var broker equal new uh, SQL uh, you're seriously SQL unit code. testing a broker right now i'm just i'm just trying to see i'm not gonna leave that code it's it's um uh -huh. it's me trying to uh, uh, -huh. uh -huh. public class student <laughs> prop go ahead you don't know how you don't know how I, how I do this yet string name yeah yeah and then uh let's see here paul so this is your student and then we want to basically have a an expression of some kind. So I queryable of student uh, query equal uh, in. Uh, so just say something list. like new list, new list yeah. of student dot select dot. Yeah, dot select student student dot name. And that okay. should return I numerable. I'm totally cool with and then I want to I want an expression and this is your query expression great uh, what is this guy complaining about it's saying if you say dot as queryable after that you'll get your queryable back yeah or yeah or we can do that yeah as queryable there you go so oh, something else is going on. New list. What is it? Cannot implicitly convert type link I query. Oh, because you're doing strings. dot select, you've effectively got a list of strings at that point. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh shoot. So we so still, just, I, I still. It's just need... an I queryable, isn't it? Link. At that point. Yeah. Link. Yeah. I guess so. So okay. So this query. Yeah. Okay. Where? No, not where. Uh, select s s dot name equal poll right and and oh, queryable queryable expression expression yeah the, need no, a couple of equals here there. i don't think you need this though you you don't see mm -hmm. huh. so, oh yeah i suppose that's that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so this is that and then i can go here and say string result and then your broker dot generate with an expression <laughs> i love how the the thing is trying to <laughs> so this student oh we don't even need that right because we already did uh and then here generate generate i'll oh, get sql query perfect SQL query, yeah. okay great and then uh look how does it how does it know that do you see this yeah that's weird that's like <laughs> You see this? AI. This, is, AI. This, AI. this is weird. This is weird. Anyway, I I want to print this out. So console dot write line result. 
Okay, cool. Let's do this. If it works, we're done here. If it doesn't, then Paul needs to go back and properly write his code. <laughs> if it doesn't, you broke it in some way, because I'm yeah. sure it worked last week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it worked last week. Don't know what happened. How many times? <laughs> how many times have I run into situations where something truly worked, literally, on a Friday afternoon? Right now, watch. And then you... <laughs> <laughs> there it is yeah that's beautiful Magic. so so select case huh yeah I think. oh did i say a where clause oh what did i do what did i do that's crazy what was the other how do you even do select name equal Paul? Like what? No. What did I do? I was just <laughs> doing select property. I didn't even know that was a thing. I me, me neither. What is that? What does that even oh, mean? You were, you were selecting if the name that'll, is equal yeah, to Paul. You were selecting a boolean result of true or false. Result, yeah. <laughs> and you're just sitting there. <laughs> there it is. Ah, so much better. I had such a weird, yeah. So, okay. So now we don't actually care about from in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, it works. Wow, Paul, congratulations. You actually did something for this project. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on par now. We've both done one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sam did the rest, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this no, this is actually this is actually pretty cool. I, I appreciate that. This this basically is what we're trying to do in here. Um okay, brokers. Cool. Brokers uh, uh get SQL query from from expression. Right, and then I'm gonna say with what's your what's your thing again? Paul Wardy? Is it just Paul Wardy like this? What's your uh, uh, what's your GitHub name, dude? Yeah, it's the same as my Discord. Oh, T Wardy. What is yeah. T? T, T, T oh, it's a, it's a play on words. It's the spelled wrong. They have doctors for these kind of things, you know. Yeah. You should see a doctor <laughs> for that. It, it, it was a thing that just seems to have like floated around the entire internet, and I was just like, "This is stupid." <laughs> and, I, and I changed my name one day just to take the piss out of it, basically. And it stuck for some reason, and I don't know why. <laughs> Dude, is that even? Yeah, it is. Okay, all right. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess it stuck. I guess that's that. This is this is me giving you homage. I guess you say homage. Is that what you say? Homage. homage. Yeah. Give homage to Scotland. <laughs> uh, I will discuss William Wallace with you at some point. <laughs> nice. But today is not the day. Today is not what I'm going to be discussing. Yeah, that's great. I don't think okay. I'll do the Scots particularly proud. <laughs> I'm how too come, English. <laughs> how come? How come we don't have Scottish people in our uh, in our uh, community? We need Scottish. They know better. We need... <laughs> they follow their own standards. <laughs> we need Irish people. I knew. Yeah, that'll be cool. I knew you like can Irish. fight. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> a Scottish accent. Yeah, oh, I knew. I knew you can fight. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. That's not something a, an English person ever does, right? That's <laughs> like, as an American, you can get away with it because it's just funny. But as an English person, that's like right pistols at dawn. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, here we have also Southerners. Well, it's colder than a well digger's knee out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, howdy, hey all, hey y'all, and all kinds of fun stuff. I don't know. I, you know, I, I, you know, I like to have, I like to have a little bit of fun, but listen, man, you know, this is it. This is this part. What that basically means is that we, uh, let me just show you here. I think I did the Ooh. next bit as well. You did the service. Uh, no, oh, I, did, you, I did the bit the... that takes the SQL query and turns it into uh, an O token 
hierarchy. Yeah, that's that's the service, and that's what we really want to like kind of talk about because what we want to do, Paul, is to go and say. Let's see here. So in our model here, we basically want to go and say, I have I have my expression service. I have my SQL query service. Uh, sorry, broker. So this is your expression broker. So that's a thing that takes an O token and returns an expression. But now you have a SQL query broker that takes in a, a we have a couple of services sitting in front of these so you have an o expression service in here and then you have we're going to have an o query service in here right so these are the two things that we can work with we're going to eventually need a uh, another service that takes in a a sql query and turns it back into an O data, uh, an O data, an O token, basically, right? And that could probably either land up in here, or it could, it, or it could land somewhere in a different service. But we do know that we have an orchestration service sitting in here, that will basically take that O token and turn it into whatever. So this is our O expression orchestration service. And this is the guy that takes an O token from another orchestration service sitting. That's the one that you and Casper and Joe and all these folks worked on and basically goes and says, give me this, uh, give me this model, basically give me this. Uh, so, so ideally we're going to end up with one coordination service sitting on top of all of this. And this coordination said, like, I know all of this is lit up. I need to rename this real quick, but you know, this is done and this is done. And now we just finished this one. We need to do the service now. And the service is going to be very straightforward. It's, it's basically us basically going and saying, take that expression, make sure that it, uh, make sure that it's not invalid and basically process it and turn it back into whatever, right? Into a SQL query, whatever, right? If we're turning this into a SQL query, then we need something sitting in here. It, we could go back and use the O token. It's going to be sitting in here, O token service. There is tokenization service, tokenization service, and there is projection, projection service, right? We could probably reuse this guy. So this guy would be sitting like this, really, to go and say, hey, in addition to this, give me back O tokens, you know, from the query that's coming back. I'm okay with that model. That works too, right? Um, let's just get that O query. O query service is going to be the easiest one of them all because you already did most of the work on the broker side we just need to kind of make sure that the validation is in place that you're pulling your dependencies properly and doing any logic that's needed in there to make this work right uh, the broker that we just built has a hint of logic it has a lot of sequencing in it which i'm not very happy about but uh, we can we can always go back and simplify it okay my friend so wednesday we finished the o query service what do you think about that does that work does that work for you yeah i mean I'm certainly learning a lot about the standard here and how you approach um, certain aspects of it because um, I, to be honest, I would have thought that there was enough business logic in the broker that we just wrote that I would have classed that as, um, you know, the, as, a, as a service, as a foundation service. Yeah. And then I would have said, hey, the query service that we're going to build next week will be a processing service. Maybe, maybe we should revisit that because even if we move these things upstairs a little bit, we might need to uh, we might need to find a way to test it. See, we we abstract away the things that we didn't own because they're not always that easy to to mock and 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 kind of like most of the libraries that you will be using in the .NET world is not. Is not standard. It's not even bare minimum standard compliant, meaning that they don't have interfaces that you can easily. People like to play with, you know, sealed classes and abstract classes. And hey, this database is going to throw a SQL exception, but good luck trying to in instantiate that. Good luck. You'll never ever be able to instantiate it. Which seems like it's it's mm -hmm. telling me that there is a problem in the .NET world. You know, it's not as bad as Go. Or or, or, or or Rust or any of these languages, but they, we still have problems in our world that we need to fix. Um, 
anyway, let's just do the yeah. query service and see what happens. You know, I think this guy here might need a little bit of simplification. I'm going to put it as blue because it looks to me like it's doing a little bit of sequencing. It's not logic. It's not doing querying. It's not doing if else statements. So I, I've noticed that within the community, a lot yeah. of the questions I answer are about what can and can't go into brokers. So yeah. it might be worth us doing a session because yeah. um, I've noticed that like the way I approach brokers, um, the one, the sort of number one golden rule that I kind of apply when I'm addressing brokers is no business logic. Yeah. Full stop. Yep. And so I try to make it so that my brokers are always just an interface and the implementation is pretty much just a pass through call. Yep. Whatever I'm doing. Yep. Whereas I've noticed that whilst you have that rule in there, you're willing to, for example, make the base class of your set of brokers essentially. So you have one broker for um, an, in, uh, an entity framework wrapper Ooh. around a database. Whereas I actually separated mine out and I said, well, if I can't have any logic in there, I would have a DB context that sits behind it. And I'd love, love to show you what I kind of did there as well, because I think that there could be something in it that you say, oh, no, no, I don't like that. It's not to the standard. But you could also look at it and say, well, actually, this is the, the branch left, branch right thing where it's effectively like a kind of foundation service of sorts. The, but because I have no control over it, because it's like you say, it's that external thing that you can't really do much with other than use it how it's intended to be used by the um, designers of that framework. Yeah. Um, you're kind of forced to implement things in that layer, essentially, the way that that thing functions. Um, so mm -hmm. I think having a certain level of separation has gained me some luxuries that I don't know that I would have attained if I would had been shall we say, strictly doing things the way you do them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and by the way, just so you know, like, it, it all comes down to what we call business logic, right? Yeah. Business logic is sequencing, selection, and iteration. If your broker is doing any of these three, like selection is like exception handling, FL statement, do while, you know, stuff like that. You're, you're having a, actually do while is iteration and selection. Right. Mm -hmm. These are the three things that I call logic because they have different branches or they do iteration or they do they create an object and then use the object to do something else and so on and so forth. Right. Which is why I'm saying this has a hint of business logic in it, because obviously you're going and saying, oh, select the second argument and then take that unary expression and then pass it to another method. That's logic. Right. That's technically business logic. So what you did there is like creating a library i'm assuming you created a library right yeah so what i did was i first i split my brokers and my services because i said hey my dependencies and mm -hmm. my purpose are separate libraries in my stack mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then does your separate... library have an exposure and a foundation service and a broker uh so in my service library i have my stack of services and that's all i have but then I have another library that sits on top of that, which contains all of like my controllers and stuff. So as far as I'm concerned, that's my exposure library, if you like. So I've got an exposure library, I've got a purpose library, and I've got a broker library within my architecture. So I've actually split them completely out. You see, whereas you're, I, I know what you're going to say, right? So within the standard, you would say, hey, a library should have exposures, yeah, exposures and brokers. Yeah, that's exactly. literally what we did with Levent that's exactly the same thing yeah. yeah so the way that I've kind of looked at it is I've said well actually because what I'm building is all designed to be sat on a web server anyway behind those controllers those controllers effectively represent the exposure layer for me everything else is business logic behind that so the only thing that I've really got to constrain is coding standards amongst my team to ensure that for example they're not directly exposing, say, through a minimal API, um, a foundation service, right? Because that would not be allowed. Yeah. Does you, that make sense? You, yeah. Mm. I'll, you know, usually there is there is a whole series called the standard discussions. It's been all mostly me and Christo. You know, I'll just I'll just grab you there and we'll start talking. Actually, it's mm -hmm. happening tomorrow. It happens every Tuesday. You know, if you want to jump in and talk about 
you know, uh, questions about brokers, because what you're saying to the community is is correct. That's the theory. The theory is to go and say, you know, hey, just put a wrapper around these existing cap capabilities, right? Just put a wrapper. That's all I want. You have a select all, you have whatever, you know, just put a wrapper. This is why I shifted the storage broker into the implementation that it's in today. The new standard storage broker implementation, you know, is basically going and saying, give me your basic API. I don't need to initiate anything. You're just state changing the state on the object and you're basically going and saying, go ahead and call that. And even with that, I'm still not happy because I'm changing a state on an object. But then again, like, I love the fact that reality comes back to me and say, chill the flip out. You know, how far do you want to go? You know, before you go, before you lose your mind, right? Um, Anyway, ideally, at some point in time, Paul, we're going to have to create a library that completely abstracts away the entity framework, right? Like, like we're going to... Wow. Have to it's funny that. you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one yeah. of my guys went and bought um, <laughs> went and bought a new laptop, and it's mm -hmm. based on an ARM CPU, and you just you can't get a SQL Server running on that, especially when it's running... Whoa apple as its operating system ah uh, yeah good luck so you've got an m1 he's got an m1 macbook and so oh, i like, said well, like those <laughs> like yeah so i said our, our stacks our stack's <laughs> not going to run right because it yeah. needs a sql server so how do we go about this without having to duplicate lots of code and have I like thought, a I SQL they did, version? wait uh, i thought they did figure out running sql on linux they, they have but it runs in a docker container and the level oh, of that's right um, yeah that's right virtualization that takes place it runs dog slow with anything like <laughs> proper like like what well you guys have all seen my diagrams right so it's mm -hmm. i don't have to explain to you what proper means but the bottom line is um what we did was we added a, um layers of further depth into that context stuff that was purely ef code um so we've now got an assembly that contains the data context, mm -hmm. which is the EF object. We've mm -hmm. then got a separate assembly, which contains the SQL server parts of initializing the model. And we've got another separate assembly, which can set up things like SQL Lite, for example. And so what you do is based on configuration, you pick which implementation of the context model that you want without having to rewrite the context and the brokers don't change at all because as far as they're concerned it's a broker that wraps up ef yeah. so all that's changing is the ef provider mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's again this is why i kind of wanted to have a little bit of a, a sort of chat with you about it because if if i'd have been really strict about it and done it the way that you do brokers what i'd have is i'd have an EF broker with a complete EF implementation built for SQL Server. And then alongside that, I'd have another complete implementation of that entire broker um, for SQL Lite, and then another one for MySQL, and another one for Postgres SQL or whatever. So I thought, well, actually doing it the way that I've done it, the only thing that I have to change is how the model is constructed because you know certain sql servers don't like foreign keys for example or certain sql servers don't like the, um, certain data types so you have to provide conversions and things like that um and all of that code is segregated out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and it's all segregated out into a technology specific assembly which sits behind the context which sits behind the broker so this is more layers of essentially cul-de-sac at this point that i'm kind of thinking of it but they're not really named services so part of the reason why i think um it would be useful to have a catch up with you on it is to say look this is what we did these were the decisions that we made and these are why we made the decisions in principle is this still to the standard and if it's not what changes would you make in order to make it more standard compliant because all we're doing Just, is yeah yeah i'm with you i'm sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead Good. So Good. all we're doing is into effectively the broker, I pass a context factory. And in fact, the context factory is built by dependency injection. Mm -hmm. um, the context factory gets passed into it from configuration at the app level, a model um, building provider, essentially. So mm -hmm. that's 
and I'm kind of taking a similar approach or I'm looking at taking a similar approach with this single sign on stuff, which, you know, at some point, think about the problem there, right? So you've got internal accounts, you've got Active Directory accounts, you've got, um, say, Azure Active Directory accounts, you've got Amazon accounts, you've got Google accounts, right? These are all providers. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you get this information from and still ensure that you only maintain that two to three maximum dependencies between mm. services. So you have to have a rule that says, actually, I can do a thing that based on configuration allows me to pick one of a number of options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and this was a problem that I found wasn't, it just isn't documented, doesn't exist in the standard. And I just had to solve it. Like I was faced with a problem. Um, Real world here, you know, yeah, I've not yeah. not got Hassan to hand and I'm yep. sitting here going, what do I do? So I made a decision. But yep. th the whole idea was, look, I'll make a decision and I'll write some code. We'll put something together. We'll get it working. And then I'll say to you, right. Let's circle back. Yeah. Let's see, circle yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, much like how we're designing Odate and Neo here, it's a case of like we build some stuff. We we make some decisions on what we're going to do. We we put in an implementation then we go you know like our dependency on Roslyn for example we talked about you know okay that might not be the final solution that we end up with when it gets to version two version three or whatever down the line mm. but it it's implementing something right now we have an answer to that problem we've solved the technical problem in some way right whether or not it's the ideal solution well that's what evolution's for in software yep. because yep. software is always a moving goalpost right yep. it's not a not something you just build once and walk away from nope it <laughs> shouldn't be and that's why we make it rewritable that's why we try to simplify it it's you know software <laughs> that's why it's software well yeah. right now right now i i mean i mean my day job is not just software anymore i deal with hardware and it's annoying but uh you know that it's it's not that cheap you, you know if you're a software engineer count your blessings because you know, if there is a component or something that's not working the way you expect, you can't just go and write code. You know, you have to go sit down with hardware engineers and design and wait a couple of months until something kind of comes into into fruition. But uh, anyway, you know, this is why I kind of removed the, the title software. I'm not software yeah. engineer anymore. I'm an engineering manager because I'm doing software and hardware at the same time, which is fun. It's it's all right. But uh, but I'll come down to this part. You know, Paul, we can. Um, why don't you jump in tomorrow? You know, tomorrow, uh, Christo, Christo and I meet up every Tuesday at 7 a.m. It's a little earlier. It's like an hour before this, right? And, uh, you know, I'll, uh, let's, let's shift the discussion. It's, it's literally called the standard discussions, right? It's made for the community to kind of jump in and be like, hey, what are you guys up to, right? Uh, I might be about 10, 15 minutes late because normally yeah, I pick up my daughter okay. around that time from school. That's okay. We yeah. also need your input like on the tracing. You know, we are, we're evolving tracing with activities and stuff like that. So I think I think your input there will be super, super valuable. Now that Etienne is, is in with us in the community, I'm pretty sure at some point in time he's going to evolve that standard mentality at some point. And yeah. then he's gonna start coming oh, in and saying, "No, you actually said that." By the way, just someone, someone coming in and saying something as simple as, "Wait a second, but you said blah 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 blah." Because sometimes I forget my own principles. Like I'll sometimes I'll mm -hmm. sit there and be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, go, 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 go." Because like remember, I have my entrepreneur side yet, and I have the side that wants to push a product out the door, right? So if I don't have these people around me saying, "Wait a second, that violates the standard." I'll be like, wait a second, these guys are right, right? Yeah. So anyway, uh, some I always I try to ask myself, like, why is the standard documented in this way? Like, a decision was made by you at some point, and I'm suspecting that the reason for that was mm -hmm. someone much smarter than me gave you some key piece of input that was useful. Yeah. And like 10 other people somewhere else in the industry probably went, yeah, that's a good idea. That's that's literally how it works. That's literally what yeah. the standard is. At some point in time, like some 10 years ago, some guy, some guy's name's Tariq. He came to me and he was like, listen, dude, uh, why is your model? Why does your model have methods in it? Like, why does your data model have methods in it? And boom, I started researching and boom, reach out to the point with I'm um, talking about anemic models. And then I started building all of that on top of it. In the tech industry, there are people that say these things, but nobody's writing. 
Nobody's documenting that. All I did is I sat down with a paper and pencil and I said, okay, go ahead. Tell me what you have, right? Some of them were meaner than others. Some of them told me you shouldn't write software anymore. Some of them, you know, said to me, you know, you're just not fit. Maybe why don't you just be something like an administrator, an IT support or something like that? And I was like, great. Thank you for that. Tell me why this is really horrible and terrible. Like on Reddit, when I put that Go video, some guy jumped up and said, you know, I guess you don't understand Go. I said, great. Tell me what exactly I don't understand about Go because I'm going for a certain idea. And it's like, I am way past getting offended for someone attacking me. Mm. This is over, right? Now I'm at this point of saying, okay, you got angry. You got that out of your system. Now tell me exactly what you're what trying got to you do. angry and yeah. why like yeah, what was I, it that i specifically screwed up exactly <laughs> and sometimes yeah. by the way funny enough sometimes when you're sitting down and you're telling people hey what exactly are you angry about and you get them to spill mm -hmm. it out you're gonna find it absolute nonsense like you'll find out that they come back and they say to you oh you can't you know if why are you why are you so <laughs> like i got this the other day i said someone said to me why do you want to explicitly put the type on the variable. And I said, so I know what this method is returning. We're like, well, I guess you're just opinionated. See, that's someone thinking about what the language can do and taking the machine side, the toaster side over the people side, right? And then I, you also have to understand, I created the standard so it will be a guidance for people who are not able to find answers from the seniors and the principals and the you know and the people that have been around a lot that people that say i'm too busy to teach you well i'm not too busy to teach anybody i'll sit down and actually talk to people and you saw the newcomers channel and all that kind of stuff they're going to be a lot of that you know a lot of people coming in i, I do nothing but pick on you constantly and you seem pretty responsive <laughs> <laughs> anyway. it's, it's a wonder you haven't said go away <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you have one sometimes. I, I, I did. I did one time, and then I thought to myself, "Why am I angry at this guy? There's no reason for me to be angry at this guy." Anyway, I have a stand up to attend to, but you know, thank you both so very much. This was a very, very, very good session. Let's keep going. Let's go build that uh, old query service. Come tomorrow at seven a.m. if you have the time. I know you said you're going to be late. Etienne, if you can too, that would be great. You know, and let's see cool. whether we can talk about these brokers for a little bit. Okay, guys, appreciate you. Sweet. Love you both. Take care. Have a good day. Bye. Sure.